Well, it looks like a bow fang. It smells like a bow fang. It no, I'm, no. Oh, I'm pretty sure it tastes like a bow fang. This is the Baofeng GT5R. This is, uh, for all intents and purposes, this is a Baofeng UV5R. You turn it on, it gives you the exact same look, feel, everything about it says that it is a Baofeng. But there are two key differences that set this apart from a regular UV5R. This radio is 100% or claimed to be 100% legal. So in order to see if that is a valid claim that this is 100% complying with the FCC regulations and that it is a clean radio on the air, we're going to compare it with the UV5R3, this one that I bought from Amazon, to just show you the difference between these two radios. So for those that are new, might not know what spectral purity is, what harmonics are, when you transmit using a transmitter, it not only transmits on a fundamental frequency, so that being the frequency that you've selected here, it will also transmit on multiple harmonics of that frequency. So for instance, if I transmit here on 146,500, then there could be a second harmonic on 293 megahertz. There could be a third harmonic on 439.5 megahertz and so on and so forth. Now, obviously this could be a problem. It could interfere with public safety. It could interfere with other users and you don't really know how much interference you're really causing. That's why there are regulations to how much power you can actually emit out of a radio that is not on the fundamental frequency that you intend to operate on. So that's why most radios have filtering incorporated into them to not only transmit your signal at full power, but all of those other multiple signals to reduce them so that they are less likely to interfere with anybody. So the FCC rules specify two things. First of all, that when you transmit using your radio, that the, any harmonics or any other signals other than the fundamental frequency, they need to be 40 dB below the fundamental frequency. Not only that, uh, for transmitters that are under 25 watts, they need to be less than 25 microwatts coming out of this radio, so any other spurious emissions, which means a level of minus 16. So I've got my spectrum analyzer here, and what I've done is I've set, to make it easy for us, a reference level of 40 dB. So that means that this reference level here is 40 decibels. So if I transmit using my radio, you can see here this is our signal, and we've got a level of 34 dB, so we wanna make sure that the signal is less than 40 dB less than this, which is minus six. And then we also want to make sure that it is less than minus 16 dBm. So that's any harmonic. So this is, this is our uh, fundamental frequency. I'm using the Baofeng, uh, this is the UV 5R3. So this is the Amazon radio, UV 5R3. So I'm going to transmit on 146.500. This is our national calling frequency here in VK. And I'm going to look at a second harmonic of 293 megahertz. And we've kept our same reference level if we transmit. And we've got 20 dB. So that is in excess of our regulations that we need because first of all, we needed it to be minus six, below minus six and also below minus 16. So in, in, F, in effect, it has to be below minus 16, which it isn't. So now we switch to the GT5R, exactly the same test, 146,500. There's our signal, same sort of signal level that we had going on the UV5R3. Now let's go to the second harmonic of 293. And I am, I'm definitely, I'm transmitting. But look at that, boom. There is nothing there on the spectrum, or if there is, it is very, very weak. So we're definitely less than our minus 16 because our noise floor here, if I stop transmitting, our noise floor is about minus, jumping around about minus 30 down here. So if we're up here, 40, 30, 20, 10, zero, minus 10, we should see any signal that is below this line here, about the middle of this division here, and it definitely is, so there we go. 
Let's move on now to the third harmonic coming out of our UV5R3. Transmit and dirty, dirty, dirty. Look at that, minus nine. Whilst this still passes the 40 dB requirement, it doesn't pass our 25 microwatts or our minus 16 dBm uh, level. We're at uh, minus 10. So a couple of dB off here from our third harmonic. Let's go and look at the GT5. GT5 transmitting and Look at that, nothing, again, nothing. And I'm definitely, I am transmitting and I am still on 146, 500. Nothing is showing on the third harmonic. So fantastic, it is clean there too. Back to the UV 5R3, transmitting on the fourth harmonic on 586 megahertz. And you can see now that there is a slight signal there, not quite there, but almost just popping up. So it's not until the fourth harmonic on a UV5R3 that it becomes compliant. Now, the GT5R, I've already tested on the fourth harmonic. Again, like all the lower ones, it is completely fine. Let's run the same test now on UHF. So 440 using the UV5R3. There's our signal on 440. Let's go to 880, which is our second harmonic. And we're good. So back to the GT5R on the second harmonic on 880 megahertz, and I transmit and we're also good. So it's both radios are clean on 70 centimeters. Let's now do an overall sweep. So I've got the UV5R plugged back in and I've got a center frequency here of 300 megahertz with a span of 400 megahertz. And what we're gonna look here is for any other random or weird spurs that might potentially crop up. So if I transmit here on 146, 500, we've got our first fundamental frequency. So this is 146, 500 that we're transmitting on. This second frequency here is our second harmonic and this is our third harmonic. Now remember that we've got here a level which is 40 dB, so 30, 20, 20 dB, 10, zero, minus 10, minus 15 is, minus 16 rather, is down about here. So as you can see there, we don't have any other big spurs. We've just got our fundamental second harmonic, third harmonic, but that is uh, a bit out of whack and not quite compliant with the rules. Now, exact same thing with our GT5R, same span, same center frequency. And look at that, that's the difference. There's our fundamental, we've got no other spurs along the band here. That is clean as a whistle. Not only that, but if you try to transmit out of band, it doesn't let you. So I highly recommend it based upon those results. If you want to pick up a GT5R, then you can do so from a link in the description to Amazon. Radio Oddity sell these on Amazon. Currently, the price is around about $27, but they do have sales and they also have a six pack available as well. Radio Oddity, there is also a link below to directly to their store and you can get $15 off using my referral code. There is a minimum order requirement though, of course, so if you buy a couple of these, then you can save some money that way too. Coming up next, we're going to learn a little bit about this radio, the Budget Quan Chang Radio. This is extremely versatile, hackable, and also experimental. And this TalkPod A36 Plus, this comes with airband reception included as well. Follow me over to this playlist and let's see what all the fuss is about.